the show with Dan and Joe. This is episode two. This is episode three. This is episode four. This is episode five. Get a pen out, pull up heavy. In the layout, on a Eddie. I got three of us running valley. In New Dios, not for valley. Stay that money, I for Perry. I shoot droppers, call me Larry. Then in the Yonkers, I need a Navy. Don't need a sponsor, hurry to heaven. Hey guys, I'm here at the Futures Game and I just want to take a minute to talk about the sponsor of our whole entire trip, Clean Fuego. Thank you guys so much for helping us out. But you guys are probably wondering, what is Clean Fuego? Clean Fuego is an elite baseball training tool used by some of the best pitchers in the world. It gives you instant feedback from your throw, kind of like when I was throwing live to Eric Sam, I could see I had a lot of wobble. That's not a good spin efficiency. You want higher spin efficiency. So me and the boys are pretty much just rocking Clean Fuego this entire trip, using their product, showing people, spreading the love for the game just like they're doing. They've honestly one of the best products in the market and some dope merch and dope gear. Maybe a little collab coming soon with Dan and Joe, who knows? I don't so I just want to start the episode saying thank you guys so much. Check out Clean Fuego. Use my promo code. Check out all their stuff. It's, it's like literally one of the best tools you can get for baseball, especially pitching, training. So yeah, thanks again to Clean Fuego, and hopefully you guys enjoy the episode. Let's go. Hey, man, nice to meet you. Yeah. Sam, nice Cam, to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. Cam. What up, man? Sam, nice to meet you. Oh, man. All right, get your ass in the fucking cage. Go, go. Brothers, Buster, Trevor's dad. Hi. Oh, no way. What's up? I've seen you the vlogs. That's bad. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Let me all built up and then upstairs I can bring you guys a little bit. We got these lights so we can change colors as well. Yeah. Um, so these ones right here that are like like brighter, we can change colors. So like I'll I'll show you guys later. Yeah. Red, green, lights. whatever the fuck we want. Exactly. Can you guys see that? That's my back grave. Yeah. Your, your, your boy's back control is uh, close to 20. Yeah. 20 yeah, out of yeah. 80. So, uh, Love, yeah, you guys do a great job with having the hit tracks. Like, hit tracks is a fucking video. game yeah. changer. You know? I know. So, so you're gonna bomb off this guy today or what? Dude, absolutely. All right. Let's go. It's okay. fucking happening. Thanks for the boys. Yes, sir. Let's go. Let's go. That's, awesome. that's basically it. Our facility. A plyo wall right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We basically got everything done. I uh, just did my throw in on Monday. Hey, what's up, man? Yeah, great to meet you, man. Kev, of course, you guys know. Famous. Yeah, of course. My guys, nice to meet you. Guys, yeah. 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 Nice to meet you. Oh, always. Yeah. Yeah. My guys yeah. here, yeah. famous, you know, he thinks it's a big shot now, you know, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. This is what it's all about. Let's go. Yeah. That's camera right that, there, that's, <laughs> that's him. So, yeah. There's gotta, video, yeah, yes. Gotta, gotta yeah. remind everybody that yeah. he is an excellent bunter. Yeah. Let's go. Oh. And this one? Everything's rolling. Yeah. All right, sweet. Sweet. Test, test. I'm talking. Test, test. Yeah. Suck a dick. No, i all right, what's up guys? We are here with Eric Sim, king of Juco. Uh, so former professional baseball player, YouTuber, content creator with Momentum, and of course, the king of Juco. That's, that's right. The, that's the name. So, but before everything happened with the king of Juco and all that stuff, you were just a kid from South Korea. Right. So tell me your story from once you moved at th age 13 to right. from South Korea to Canada. What happened from there? Uh, a lot, a lot of shit happened. Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, I've been through a lot of uh, crazy roll roller coaster of a ride uh, in terms of like life. Mm -hmm. um, I think that made me who I am now too. Um, so I'm grateful for it. Um, so I was born in South Korea. I uh, grew up there playing baseball as well. I started playing ball when I was eight, and I played ball for five years, right? Because I moved when I was 13 to Canada, immigrated. Um, and yeah, man, playing uh, ball in South Korea was fucking uh, crazy uh, because it's a different culture there. Yeah. So like we used to get beat the fuck up by the coaches and really? shit. But it's like that is a life, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah, so yeah, yeah. over there, like, coaches were gods. Yeah. Like, okay. you literally do whatever the coach says, mm -hmm. and, and that was it. You know, you follow orders, and you mm -hmm. practice for, I was practicing eight to ten hours a day. So it's that And serious. I'm fucking 10 years old. That's like, crazy. It's, it was insane. So is burnout like a huge thing? In, huge yeah. thing. But I mean, even when you burn out in Korea, you can't really like stop play yeah. because like, you just can't. You, yeah. you, your parents like are so much, so yeah. invested in yeah. you yeah. playing and even the coaches and shit like that, the, the lifestyle over there. It's like, if you, if you don't make it, you're fucked. Yeah. But I mean, there, but people over there are willing to take that risk. Yeah. You know, I was one of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I uh, grew up playing there. Uh, and again, like funny fucking quick story. Um, so I remember we're taking in and out, right? Infield, outfield. And uh, like our left fielder fucks up the throw or whatever, right? He's like, fuck. The coach is like, hey, get your ass over here. So he runs all the way from left. We're 10. He runs all the way from left, gets in a push-up position. He hits a fuck out of him with a fungo, like no on the ass, way. like just like blasting him like three times. And kid goes like, runs back crying. The coach is like yelling. And I'm like catching, I'm like, what oh my god! <laughs> what the crazy. fuck? I'm so, I cannot make a mistake because yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna die. That's you know, wild. like so. I played ball in that situation, mm -hmm. uh, which I mean, it's not the right way. I'm not saying that, but it also made me really, really fucking in terms of mentally tough. Because yeah. I mean, you had to survive. Yeah. You got to find a way to survive, and I did that for five years, right? So shit was insane, dude. And then I went to Canada. 
diff, like a fucking totally different. We're practicing for like an hour, you know? It's yeah, like for like home. once a week. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, coach, like, give me a high five. I'm not speaking any English. Like, it's like, what the fuck is going on? But they're laughing, so yeah. I'm laughing too, because yeah. I don't know what they're saying, but it's yeah. just like, it was just a so culture you, shock was in, insane. So you didn't speak any English? I didn't speak no English. Um, I, I mean, again, I, when I was playing ball in Korea, I didn't go to school. Yeah. And you wow. literally show up for an attendance check and you go straight down to the fucking locker room. You play ball for like eight to 10 hours a day. Dude, so. so was it just that region of Korea you're from or is it like South Korea that's like the culture that's a culture there um, at, at least at the time I heard it's of course different now I'm still fluent in Korean as well yeah. uh, but it's just like yeah it's just like a different culture but so it's kind of hard for you guys to understand yeah. but because I've been through it it's like that's what I had to deal with yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. I was riding the bus on the way because I had to dr- ride a bus an hour each way wow. to go to a practice right so or go to the school so I took a, I took a bus at like 6 30 in the morning get to the school by 7.30. We do, a, we do attendance check at like eight. And then for 10 minutes, we do attendance check, we show up for that, go straight to the locker room, we change, we ball out from 9 a.m. till fucking like 6, 7 p.m. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy, that's It was so insane, wild. it was yeah. fucking insane. And like, but again, I was just so accustomed to it, yeah. and that was a life, you know? So do you think that kind of instilled like the work ethic you have today, where it was just like, you were even scared to be lazy in South Korea? So it, it's it, like- it definitely made me, I think it's more like mentally strong. Yeah. So like, even when I was going through some bullshit in the minors, and like, you know, like, I, I was just broke, and I just had to find a way, but yeah, it wasn't easy. I still talk shit about it. I, yeah. I don't think it was right, yeah. but I still did it, because I mean, I'm not, I've been through a lot worse, you know, right. in Korea, you know what I'm saying? So Yeah, that's crazy. So, and then eventually, I mean, tell your story. So after you get to Canada, what mm-hmm. happened from there? So you play up and then... So, you know, I mean, Juco first thing, I had to learn English, which <laughs> was like the biggest fucking challenge I've had in my That's life. crazy. Because, um, I di- again, I didn't speak any. Because, again, yeah. I didn't go to school in Korea. I didn't learn English. I didn't know what the fuck that was. That's the crazy. only thing I knew was hi and bye, yes and no. <laughs> That's all wow. I knew, right? So I showed up. Um, and, again, like, I'm, I'm taking uh, ESL classes, English second mm-hmm. language classes, um, just to, like, survive. And for me, the, the kind of guy I am, though, yeah, I didn't speak no English or nothing like that, but I had to find a way. I'm not just going to be like, oh, like I can't do shit. Like, yeah, fuck yeah, I gotta corner, to like yeah. find a way, you know. Yeah. Like so, I started learning. You know, I I was playing baseball still. So like even when I showed up to practice, I didn't know what the fuck they're saying. But I mean, I was like Said. sign language, fucking like whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like I'll do it, you know. Yeah. Like so, I'm I'm really good at reading faces now because <laughs> yeah, right? I'm so used to like just reading people's faces just for like what they're saying, yeah. you know. So, um, but that was crazy. And then I ended up playing uh, high school ball there. Is that noise okay? No, I think it's fine. Yeah. Okay. These are pretty directional. Yeah. So um. So yeah, I, was, I just started playing. Uh, kept on playing. Um. And I was pretty good in high school. Um. And then I ended up going to JUCO after that. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay. So then JUCO. Mm-hmm. So tell me what. It, so I mean, that's everything. That's the JUCO banner. <laughs> Right. So what does it mean to be a JUCO bandit? And then where did you kind of first instill that? Like, right. So JUCO bandit, I mean, some people have said that before, but I wanted to make that a thing mm. because what do bandits do? They don't, they don't really, you know, get nice things handed to them yeah, yeah. and like, you know, have their parents like do shit for them. No, bandits, we fucking steal shit if we got to, you know what I'm saying? We, what we find yeah. a way, yeah. whatever it takes. Yeah. Now that is the motto, that is the my self model that I go with because yeah. you got to find whatever the fuck it takes. I'm not saying you got to steal from people. I'm not sure. saying that. But the mindset, but the yeah. mindset yeah. is there. You know, like, so if you're going to go ball out, you need to go 110%. Mm-hmm. You know, even me right now, I'm training. I have no reason to train. I ain't going to play Pro Bowl again, but I, I don't give a fuck. I just hit 90 on the mount. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I'm trying to push my body to the limit because that's something I truly enjoy doing. Yeah. So being a JUCO bandit, man, it's just like the mindset. Um, you don't get shit. When I went to JUCO, it was shit. I was stuck in a Kobe, Kansas, small town. You've probably never heard of it. No one has. That's good. Yeah. It's a small town of like maybe 5,000 people max. Some sh- fucking out of nowhere, Kansas. And you didn't know anyone on the team? I didn't know nobody, That's man. Crazy, I, yeah. No one from my hometown went there. I was the only one. And like, you survive. You went to some piece of shit place, yeah. have no fucking equipment, no nothing. <clears throat> we had to go to a, we didn't have a gym. So we had to go to a, a, a town gym that we had to drive That's in the great. fucking yeah. snow. Kansas winter is fucking brutal, yeah. especially with the windshield and everything. Um, we survived though, that's a thing, right? So you go there for two years, you fucking work your fucking ass off and you survive and you fucking make to the next level that whatever, yeah. you, whatever it is, you know? Yeah. So to me, that's what being a Juco man it is, the mindset of like DGAF, like you gotta find whatever it takes. I don't give a shit what kind of shitty town you're in. Make it work. Mm-hmm. What are you trying to do? I wanna play at a, at, a, at a higher level. Yeah. When I went to Juco, I'm like, I wanna, I wanna survive here yeah. and I wanna fucking move on to the next level. 
And then I ended up going to a Division One after that, which well, at the time for me, that was good for me. Mm -hmm. I wanted that. And I wanted to play Pro Bowl after that. I got that too because I had a goal in mind and I did whatever the fuck it took to get there. Yeah. So, that's, so you had that mindset going up, right? So you end up playing Pro Bowl, retire, and then you move back to Canada, right? Right. So what happened for those two years? Did you think you just got lazy or you just got complacent with your life? And then just, what, like, what was your mindset? You just need to make money. Too. Right. So I mean, like, what was your mindset? I don't know if it was complacent, but I think it was more of, um, I was really broke. Yeah. Um, so I got done playing ball when I was 27 yeah. and I played minor leagues for six years. And then uh, I don't know if anybody, minor leaguers watching this, I know you're broke. <laughs> We're just broke 24-7 yeah. all day. I was on a high draft pick. I was a 27th rounder. Yeah. My signing bonus was 15000 After tax, it was about 11000 You roll through that about two years of offseason. You know what I'm saying? So, And I worked every offseason to make uh, just ends meet, you know, and then I did that. But when I was 27, I got done playing. I had about 500 bucks in my bank account. I, was, I vividly remember in my checking account, I had 500 bucks left, and that was it. I'm like, I'm broke, you know? Like so, And I didn't want to play ball because I went through a bunch of shit. So you I'm like, done with baseball? I was done. Yeah. I was mentally done. I was physically done. Mm -hmm. I'm like, fuck this. And I was like the year I was trying for pitching and shit like that. And it just wasn't it for me, you know? Like, so I went back, got a job as a bartender. And then I did that for a couple, I did that for a couple of years, became a bar manager after that. And I did a total of about four and a half years. Yeah. And then when I was doing that, again, lifestyle is different. Um, so you don't, again, I went from playing baseball every day to working like right. a regular job right. right but i mean bartending is not a regular job because you, you're working your ass off you, right? you work yeah. your ass yeah. up yeah. but it's like late hours i yeah. sometimes i'll get home like two in the morning four in the morning if it's for a party or whatever yeah. and then you got to clean that shit up and and do all over again next day yeah. you wake up super late like 1 2 p.m and you just fucking basically just get go to work after yeah. that you know your shift starts at four o'clock you know yeah. what i'm saying so long days so you just do that i did that for two years i did that for two years let myself go i went from my playing weight when i was a pitcher i was about 240 and and my playing weight when I was a catcher was 225, so I was in good shape. Yeah. Um, and then I got up to 290. I just got fat <laughs> as fuck <laughs> because I mean I just. So you're working hard in one aspect. Of your I was just like full standing bartending. Yeah. I was yeah. making money. I was yeah. I'm like this is great. Um, but you know physically I'm not doing anything. Yeah. You know I didn't go to the gym for two years. I didn't do shit for yeah. two years. Yeah. I just made money. Mm -hmm. I just I was so broke and I had such a like a big thing on making money because yeah. I was so broke for mm -hmm. how many years, right? Yeah. Even in college, I mean, you guys are in college. You don't, you don't have no money, no, you know? You, you know, know like, yeah. And then you play pro ball, you still got no money. So right. I did that for so many years. I'm like, I, I want to make money. Mm -hmm. You know, that was my main thing. So I ended up making money, but like I let myself go too, you know what I'm saying, for two years. And after, I'm like, <clears throat> I just one day I just look at myself, man. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Yeah. You know, like I was like, I was just like a fat slob mess, you know? I'm like, fuck it. I just want to see where I'm at, yeah. just for fuck of it, because I had like a day right? off or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. So I grabbed a ball, I had a pocket radar with me, went to some local shitty park. It's not even a baseball, it's like a fucking little league slash like softball, whatever. I went yeah. there, just threw against some fucking piece of shit net, yeah. I threw 78. And my elbow felt like it was I was gonna have TJ. You know, yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. this is this is bad. Like yeah. I truly let myself go. Obviously, for two years, like, I got just got fed as shit. I didn't do any throwing. Yeah. So that day on, I started just training. You know, I don't give a fuck. I started training not every day in the beginning, because I mean I just had to find a balance of yep. work and, and doing the baseball stuff. But I ended up sending it. And then I did that for about a year or so. Mm -hmm. And then I did uh, now, what was, people were you still making videos then? Or yes, I was okay. making videos. Yeah. I was because I wanted to prove ev to everybody that there's a lot of bullshit out there, you know. And, and I'm not saying whatever you, you're creating, I respect you, but like for me, I don't think the, the three simple steps to do anything or do these simple drills and you're gonna gain yeah. some shit. Uh, to me, that's eyewash. I want to show what it actually takes to get fucking to throw 90. So for me at the time, my goal was to hit 90. I threw 78, my elbow hurts, it's kind of, I'm out of shape, let's hit 90. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up throwing like 88, 86, um, and I, I did like whatever I, whatever I could do at the time, I did full sand, and it took me about half a year, mm -hmm. half a year to get there. Yeah. Now after that, um, <clears throat> I took a little break, and then I did my, not famous, but 95 or die journey. Yeah, man. Um, was that with Driveline? Or you had like a promise with Driveline? <coughs> yes, I talked to uh, Dean from Driveline and Dean, um, Jackson, right? Dean Jackson. Yeah, so he got me on a program and um, I, I was like, I don't care. I don't care what it, what it takes. I'm going to throw a 95 because I was like, fuck everybody. I was just like, I don't care. I'm going to do it for myself. I'm not trying to get signed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it for myself, for my, just for me. You know, like sometimes you got to do shit for yourself, not for every, anyone else. So I was like, Let's go. And then so Dean sent me a program, and I, I did exactly 151 days. 
It took me 151 yeah. days, which is like four and a half months. Yeah. I went full send. I journeyed every single day of training. Yeah. I, um, I filmed everything on my iPhone, whether it's throwing, hitting, lifting. I started training every single day, and then I got there. Now, people think, oh, you're just going to go up like this. That's not how it works. I have a picture of the graph of your view. Yes. There was a massive plateau, right? Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. And again, that's how... It happens to everybody. Yeah. If it was just a fucking gains all day, mm -hmm. I mean, DeGrom will throw 120 right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that's not how it works. You, you go through a lot of these plateaus because yeah. your body adapts to it. Now you're going to mix it up. You're going to make changes. But some of the changes that you make is not good, so you got to go back to your old stuff. There's a lot of changes that's happening yeah. throughout your journey, right? And for me, I wanted to focus on the journey, not so much on the, on the, on the, on the, the end goal. Yeah. But... Of course, having an end goal is everything because yeah. that also gives you a motivation to get there. So I went full sand for 151 days, journeyed every single day. I didn't give a fuck where I was at. I was in a shitty fucking, I was in a small town called Duncan. Mm -hmm. um, there is not a whole lot out there for baseball. There was no baseball facilities or nothing. So I, took, I got a key from this local kid some shitty fucking cage. I called it a prison. Yeah, yeah, the, prison the prison cage. Yeah. I literally went there every single day by myself. There's no heat. There's no fucking um, AC. There's nothing. So it's in the summer, it's hot as fuck. It's winter, it's cold as fuck. And it's concrete floor. Um, none of this fucking mad bullshit. And when full sand, I threw fucking 95 in that yeah. bitch. 95. You know what I'm saying? So again, that is what I want to preach more of a doesn't matter what you have, if you want to make it happen, you'll make it happen. Yeah. What's your biggest advice for kids? Because, like I said, you probably get so many DMs. Like I talked to Dr. Heenan last week. Yeah, yeah. Like, everybody asks him, how do I throw harder? Everybody wants to know, how do I throw harder? Right. So what would your biggest advice be to a kid who just wants to gain velocity? The, the biggest thing I've learned is that there is not one fucking thing that's going to get to get you to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. So if you want to throw 95, you're throwing 90, there is not one fucking thing that you can do before you get there. It's a, it's a lifestyle change, okay? Yeah. It's your entire life your entire life has to change, okay? Whether it's um, getting stronger. If you're a fucking small, fucking scrawny little shit, you need to fucking get bigger. Yeah. And if you're already big as fuck and you're moving slow, you need to move faster. Mm -hmm. You know, just, just simple shit. People like make it really complicated. It's not that complicated. Of course, more details we get, like you can get complicated, uh, but it's not. You know, like whatever you're, you're lacking at, you gotta do that shit for a long period of time to work on fixing that. Yeah. That makes sense? So if you're looking forward to this one thing that's gonna fix you, uh, you're fucking drunk, all right? <laughs> yeah. Just go fucking, just go fuck up, yeah, all right? Because well, the easy answer, right? They, they, they do. And even like track. I've, you know, like people ask me all the time now because I'm a YouTuber and, you know, I'm, I'm fine. I'm doing fine for myself. Uh, so people are like, oh, I'm going to be a YouTuber. I'm like, well, you're not doing anything yeah. to, to what, do you, what do you want from me? Mm -hmm. I can't grab your hand and, and get you there. Give you $100,000. I'm not, I'm not, yeah. gonna, I'm not yeah. just going to blast you on my socials. I don't even fucking know who you are. I didn't yeah. know you existed until you, I saw this shitty fucking message just now. You know, like, you got to earn it. Yeah. I had to earn it. Like, I mean, I, I grew my shit throwing some piece of shit cage yeah. in Duncan. Like, what the fuck are you doing? You know what I'm saying? So people just don't get it. People just want the easy answer. Oh, do this one thing, you'll get there. Now, my answer to that, fuck off. You know, like, there is <laughs> yeah. not one thing. Yeah. So it's kind of cool because we're talking, I have a quote right here that I put in, in the script. So it's, you had a quote in one of your um, articles that was, you were in. It's, it's been an amazing ride. I'm having fun with it. You're talking about content. Right. It's just about being different. So what's the importance to you about being, you know, being unique? What's the importance of that? And then why do you want to be different? Right. So the important is, is that you get to be yourself. Like, I don't have to be who I'm not. Does that make sense? I am who I am in front of the camera, who, I'm, who I am off the camera. Yeah. You know, like, so I'm, I'm the same way. Yeah. I don't give a fuck who like you 100%, are. 100%. 100%. I don't yeah. give a fuck if you're a big leaguer. I don't care about how much money. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I don't, I don't care. Are, are, I don't yeah. care. Yeah. I don't fucking care. Yeah. Now, for me, being different also is an advantage, I think. You know, people, a lot of people are, like, shy. I'm like, oh, I'm different? Fuck that, dude. Yeah. That's an advantage. Yeah. It makes me different. Like, I'm different. I'm different than a lot, a lot of people. Yeah. But that's also why I'm doing better. Than some of these people. It's a different perspective. It's like, just, yeah, yeah dude. It's like use that. Or a curse, like you use that to your advantage. Yeah. Don't think like, oh, if you're different, oh, you gotta change. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna change. Yeah. How can I maximize who I am now? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's the biggest thing for me. And stop giving a fuck of what other people think about you. Like, I just don't fucking care. Yeah. I have a lot of haters. I don't give a fuck about them. I throw hard at them anyways. You know, like, that's all that fucking matters yeah. to me anyway. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I have a lot of haters, but it doesn't fucking matter because it's about what you want to do. Not fuck what other people think of you. It's what, what you do, how you do it. And, and honestly, like whatever you want to make it happen, you can make it happen as long as you fucking go full sand and you can fucking, you put in the time and, and effort to do that. Yeah. So what's your biggest like motivation to just keep working every day? I feel like even if the cameras weren't on and you weren't yeah. making content, right. you would still be grinding. And right. maybe not maybe exactly what you're doing, but some right. way you'd be working as hard right. as you can every day. So why do you work the way you do? 
I don't think there's any why, to be honest. I just do it. Just you know, like, it. I mean, no one tells me what to do. Like, no one, no one tells me how to show up and throw and hit. Like, no, I just want to do it. You know, like, so for me, the biggest advice would be find something you're passionate about, really, because um, I'm passionate about, like, whether I'm lifting. I want to, basically, what I want to do, I want to lift heavy ass fucking shit. I want to throw fucking gas yep. and I want to hit fucking nukes. Now, those you are. want to, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not like some other people are telling me to mm -hmm. do that. I just simply want to do that. Yeah. So I'm going to fucking do that. Yeah. But when I'm going to do that, I'm not going to fuck around and give some fucking 50% effort. I'm going to go full sand. I don't give a fuck like if my body's going to break, whatever. I don't, I don't care too much about that bullshit. Yeah. Now, sometimes I get hurt, you know? Sometimes I have some elbow issues. Right now, I just caught and fucking my elbow hurt, like my uh, thumb, sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> I fucked that up. But I don't give a fuck. I'll yeah. do the same thing tomorrow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's about like not giving a fuck and just be you and be different. Yeah. And being different is good. Use that to your advantage. Totally. I think a lot of people have like the, a little bit of an ego or something when it comes to like wanting to be different. Like they kind of they they say they want to be different, but they just fit in with everyone because right. they're scared. Exactly. And sort of similar like that. So we've talked about a lot like D1 versus D2 versus right. D3, like D1 or bus mindset. And obviously with the JUCO stuff like that, you're a real advocate for that, which right. is great. So what would your advice to be someone who's like in the recruiting process trying to figure out like like oh my friends are going D1, I really want to go D1, right. but blah blah blah. So like, what's your advice for that? And that's going back to my another like same point. Stop giving a fuck. It's just don't give a fuck. And when I say DGAF, I meant DGAF. Yeah. Like, don't give a fuck. I don't give a Like, you and I can be friends. But I don't give a fuck what you do. Yeah. Like, I'm going gonna, gonna to do <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah. Like, I'm going to yeah. do... I don't give a fuck if you go to D1. I don't, I don't care if you go to Vandy. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. I go to Juco and ball out. And I'm going to get drafted higher than you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that is that mindset you got to have to to just, like, worry about yourself, man. There's just too many people worrying about what other people think of you. Like, if I, wor if I worried about that, I would not be able to, like talk the way I do, I need to like not cuss. I still get fucking comments, oh, this guy cusses too much, I'll never watch him. I got 120,000 subs, <laughs> yeah, fuck right. you. Like yeah. there are plenty of people that love me for who I am. Yeah. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah. So stop giving a fuck of what other people think of you yeah. and just do you. Yeah. D1, D2, D3, NAI, who gives a fucking fuck? It's the best fit, whatever the best Whatever fit, the yeah. school is gonna get you the best chance yeah. of playing and developing. That's the school you fucking choose. Yeah. I don't give a fuck if it's D1, I don't give a fuck if it's a JUCO, I don't give a fuck. All right, now, if you think, oh, I'm going to go to Vandy, and that's going to be my best fit, and I'm going to play every day, I'm going to ball out, I'm going to get drafted, do it. Mm -hmm. But if you're, just going to Ju uh, if you're just going to D1 just to get some fucking, you know, shirts or whatever, this nice gear, mm -hmm. and for you to sit for a whole year, what the fuck have you achieved? You've yeah. achieved nothing. Yeah. You're a fucking, f you're, a, you're a fucking, you've done nothing. Yeah. You're a red shirt. Yeah. You sit on the fucking bench all the fucking year. Like, what, is, what, what has that got you? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, again, I'm not super, like, end goal, you know, um, emphasis on this, but because the journey is the one that matters, but what's your goal? Yeah. Like, what is, do you play baseball? So for me, I play baseball to play baseball. I don't play baseball to sit on the bench. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if I could go to a JUCO that I can play every single day, I can develop, and also I have a chance to get drafted, that's the route I'm that's going. Perfect. Why yeah, the yeah. fuck? And I'm, not, I'm not bashing on D1s because D1s are great, mm -hmm. but I went to D1 myself. But... I will not go back and change going D1 out of high school. Because yeah. for me, at the time, at age 18, I needed that fucking JUCO grind yeah. to wake me the fuck up. Yeah. I still remember my first day in fall ball JUCO. I show up. I was on a full ride. I'm like, I'm, I'm good at baseball. I'm in high school, I, I was good. You know, I'm like, I dominated. I'm fine. I went there fall ball. I'll never forget it, man. I was the biggest kick in the ass I ever had in my life. Not no one, anyone talking about me. Just seeing it in action. Mm -hmm. You show up, be like, Holy fuck. That's the first day I realized I might not play. Mm -hmm. I was like, I looked at him like, this is the first time in my life. I've been good at baseball all my life. Showed up, I'm like, I might not play this year. Yeah. Like, if I don't ball the fuck out, I might not play. Yeah, so you got that fire under your ass. Dude, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that day yeah. <clears throat> changed my shit yeah. of how I went about everything. I came up with my own routine. I fucking went full DGAF. I don't give a fuck if it's snowing, windshield, fuck you. I'm doing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So... It, 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 to me, at the time, I needed that. And that's why a lot of kids now go to JUCO route. They thank me yeah. because they, they're like, dude, this is what I needed. Mm -hmm. I was a piece of shit 18-year-old that thinks I'm better than everybody. And it changed me, yeah. you know, so. 
All right, guys, I'd like to take a minute to talk about the sponsor of today's episode, Advanced Therapy Performance and the 90-mile-an-hour formula. If you guys have been following along in my journey, you know that I took advantage of the 90-mile-an-hour formula and Dr. Heenan's remote programming uh, when I was at school at Bridgeton Academy for my postgrad year. The 90-mile-an-hour remote programming is a hyper-focused, data-driven way to get guys to 90 miles an hour pain-free. It's completely remote and helps you get access to the top coaches all in one place. What I loved about the 90-mile-an-hour formula remote programming is that it helps you perform your best today while also improving for tomorrow, so it's going to keep you healthy but make sure you're really good like even a year from now it's setting you up for success it's completely personalized like i said and they're going to give you like a whole movement assessment to see how you are as a mover so they can make your training programs to help you translate best on the mound so check them out right here i mean do some research on your own but they've been proven by by so many great athletes so many great pitchers that their program works especially the remote program is so huge for guys who don't have access to like a gym locally so use my code dsarm at checkout for 50 dollars off tell dr heenan and the team that i sent you as you guys can see i'm at a division one university pepperdine in malibu california if you guys want to reach your division one dreams i think eight TP and Dr. Heenan can help you do that. Like I said, use code DSARM at checkout and start training to reach your next level. So as someone who's played at every level, or like yep. the JUCO D1, you've seen every level of baseball, right. what's like the real talent difference between D1, D2, D3, JUCO, NAI, all that? Is there like a big difference, or does it depend on the, the conference or all that stuff? Like, what's your take See, on See, I went to JUCO and uh, D1 myself, and honestly, some of the JUCOs I played will roll through some of the D1s I played. Um, I played against, in JUCO, I played against a uh, junior college called Howard. Howard Junior College, um, they're from Texas. They went 58 and 0. What? There's the most, one of the most dominant teams Whoa. I've ever played against, That's okay? crazy, yeah. So they're, they're, they're a bunch of D1 bounce backs, fucking NAI bounce backs, and they're fucking dudes, you know what I'm saying? I still remember their, their cleanup hitter, right? He went to TCU uh -huh. after. He has so many fucking bombs. <laughs> like, I've never seen anybody hit like that. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, and their shortstop was a first rounder. I mean, just fucking dudes, yeah. dog. And their starter that went to Nebraska, like, just stupid. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't think there is, I mean, of course, maybe the depth will be the only difference. Yeah. Some of the JUCOs won't have the depth that some of the D1s have. Mm. But skill level, I've tweeted about this, too. If you've put together five top JUCOs in the nation and top five and uh, D1s, D2s, D3s, NAIs or whatever, yep. go put in there. I'm telling you, five JUCOs, we'll, we'll, we'll ball out. Yeah. I don't know who's going to win exactly. I would love to see who I mean, the fuck like wins. San Jack, like they're so loaded. Right? Dude, like, San Jack, dude, yeah. I went to a JUCO World Series this year, right? Mm -hmm. The kid from Crowder yeah. was throwing 100 to 102. It's crazy. I went there and I saw people like, oh, the gun's juice, right? I'm like, okay. I was sitting with the scouts because yeah. all the scouts like, knew me because I went there a year before. So I'm like, hey, what's up? I, we had an MLB scout. Like, the, he works for MLB. Yeah. Like, he doesn't work for nobody. He works for literally MLB. Mm -hmm. He had, like, fucking bunch of shit set up. You know those videos that go on a MLB uh, little draft yeah, thing or whatever? Him, yeah. He films those. Yeah. There. Like, dude, this dude was sitting 100, 102 <laughs> that game. That's I'm crazy. like, he's like, dude, this motherfucker is a dude, you know? Like, yeah. And a kid from Cali was on 97. Yep. Um, so again, Baseball at every level is good. Uh -huh. Now, if you have this, if you're in high school right now watching this, you're like, oh, I'm better than Jico. No, the fuck you're not. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck how good you are. Yeah. You're, not, you're not that good. I literally just saw a dude throwing 100 to 102 in Jico. You're not better than that motherfucker. Let me tell you that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So don't have, stop having that misconception of, oh, everyone, all my friends are going to D1 and I need to go to Jico. Fuck them. Fuck them. They're going to sit on the bench for a whole year. Yeah. If they get lucky, they're going to get 30 at bats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to get 230 at bats. You're going to ball the fuck out. Hopefully, you can move up to the next level after that. Mm -hmm. You know. Plus, you have a chance to get drafted. Fuck you. You're in the best position possible for yourself. All right? Fuck what other people think about you. These D1, D2, NAI. Fuck them. Yeah. Go to JUCO. Ball the fuck out. Do what you can to be the best player that you can possibly be. Bet on yourself. Bet on yeah. yourself, yeah. man. Yeah. Totally agree with that. So... To kind of pivot a little bit, I have a section called the current state of baseball because, uh -huh. you know, there's so much different, just not like, I wouldn't say controversy, but just so many different opinions about right. where baseball's going. <clears throat> so are you pretty optimistic about the current state of baseball, like travel ball, personal development, I, so, even social media and like TV ratings stuff? Are you optimistic about baseball where, where the way it's trending? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think, what, so people are going to talk shit no matter what, yeah. okay? Even me, like I have a lot of shit to say about travel ball and stuff like that, but at the end of the day, things will get better, mm -hmm. okay? People will make adjustments, things will get, just like baseball, for example. Pitchers used to throw 88. Now they throw 98, yeah. you know? Uh, but I mean, now you adapt to the situation, you bond. Some of these old jabronis don't like it, the way it is. Who gives a fuck? Baseball's like watched. Yeah. People, kids watch baseball now because they've got Tatis, we got fucking Trout, we got Shohei. Like, uh, these are some of the best players, some of the best athletes baseball's ever seen. You know what I'm saying? We gotta, we literally have a human being throwing 100 on the mound. 
hitting 115 right. at the plate. That, like physically shouldn't be possible. Literally. Like, that's like, just, that's yeah. like literally yeah. never happened in baseball. Yeah. We have some of the best players in the in the in the world yeah. that's ever existed. You know, we got DeGrom. Like we got these just unbelievable athletes. You know what I'm saying? So baseball's always gonna get better. Now, with everything, of course, travel ball, there's a lot of stuff that comes into play. Um, and there's a lot of eyewash too. You mm -hmm. know, there's a lot of bullshit, and that's with anything. I played Pro Bowl for six years. I can talk about Pro Bowl all fucking day. So much politics, there's a lot of bullshit in there. People don't really see. Okay? I've seen my buddy that was a free agent sign. Okay, so nobody got paid fucking fuck all for money. He was hitting like 360, never got moved up. The fucking some second rounder hitting fucking 220 gets moved up. That's how it works, because the balls, they're invested in them. Yeah. Like, that's politics, right? Mm. So that's that shit like that everywhere. Now, travel ball and all that, I heard it's like some of it's even worse. You know, like, it gets really bad. Yeah. Um, mm. But at the end of the day, the good people will make the difference. Yep. Kind of like what you're trying to do with your content. Yeah, there's so much more information out there now, mm -hmm. right? You're a creator, like, with, with how many followers? You know, even myself, we're in this game. We're changing people's perspectives, right? right? And that's, like, at the ground floor of where most people are, right? Exactly. Trying with content. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. right? Yeah. And there's a lot more of us coming is what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Totally. We're, yeah. like, the first. I'm, like, the one of the first ones now, like, with, of course, there are ones before me. Yeah. We're the first ones to really, like, change the, the content game. And what's content? It's information. Yeah. People see that. I'm, like, oh, shit. What the fuck is yeah. that? You know what I'm saying? So, there's a lot more good information out there. People are not stupid, yeah. okay? We, whether you think pe everyone else is stupid and you're the smartest, you're not, yeah, okay? Yeah. So people will notice you if they're not dumb. You know, if, if they're, smart, if they're smarter than you think. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they'll figure it out and things will always get better. So I'm very optimistic on what, how the baseball is going to be played. And also the game itself, I think it's always going to get better. Mm -hmm. um, so. so on that note, yeah. So what do you think MLB should do on their part to help push baseball in, in a positive, more positive direction? Um, I think they're, they're trying. Even yeah. though they do a lot of these um, creator class or mm -hmm. whatever. And they, yeah. they're, they're trying to focus more on the influencers and creators. And honestly, I think that is a future. Yep. Even myself in the game of influencer world or whatever. Dude, I get recognized a lot. Yeah. You know, just it's this crazy world yeah. that we live you in. Have inf that's why it's called influencer. Like, you have influence over people. Exactly. And people like what you have to say. Yeah. So it's yeah. huge. And again, even for yourself, I'm sure you've realized when you travel, like, people, like, know who you are. Yeah. We are it's probably wild. more yeah. recognized than some of the big leaguers sometimes. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's not saying that we're better than them or anything like that. I'm not. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying we have a lot of impact on the people. Yeah. Especially, like, when, when I have, like, 100,000 followers just on IG or whatever. Like, that's a lot of impact that we can have, yeah. right? So I think MLB should utilize a little more uh, with, and I, I know they're trying. They are trying with, like, having, doing a bunch of stuff with creators, influencers, stuff like that. But I think that is a future. Mm -hmm. That is a future. Rather so than just, like, oh, we're baseball, we're just going to do us, and then everything else will be fine. Yep. No, you got to try. Look at NBA. Look at fucking NFL. I mean, they're massive in, in the social media game, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I think, I think, again, I think we'll get there. We just, we just need to change that mindset of, oh, Influencer, no, yeah. like they can have a lot of impact on the kids, yeah. the youth. The youth is the future, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, we crush on the youth, you know, mm -hmm. like that's yeah. the, what, what's your uh, most watched like age group? Oh, 14 to 18. 14 to 18? I'm sure it, there's still, but like 11, 12, 13, else. even them. 100%. Like, they're on content. But our, yeah, yeah, our yeah, majority yeah. are, yeah. they're like young kids. Literally 14 right? to 18. And yeah. then the kids love this. Yeah. And then more of these kids love our content, yeah. more likely they're going to play baseball or get in the content game of baseball or whatever. Yeah. Right? And that's so, like the most impressionable age group just in general. Like, and we're getting, I mean, they're watching this every day. It's crazy. <laughs> the same with me. Yeah. So, and yeah. again, that is the future, right? How are we going to grow the, grow the youth? People, MLB talks about it all the time. We want to grow the game with the youth. Mm -hmm. Use us. Use yeah. the influencers. Use the creators to to be able to get more people engaged in baseball. And I think that's how you grow the game. Yeah. So to kind of pivot off that, what has baseball as a whole kind of taught you just about like life? I mean, baseball has been so pivotal through your whole life. What is it? What's one of the biggest lessons you've learned from baseball? Biggest lesson is that fuck. I mean, baseball don't owe you anything. You know, yeah, like yeah, I mean, yeah. and then so like for me, I just simply do what I do because I enjoy baseball. I fucking love the way it is. I love throwing. I love hitting. I love even lifting for baseball. I enjoy doing it. So I'm going to do that. And luckily, of course, I find a path so that I can do what I love for a living. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's just a uh, just crazy world, man. But I mean, honestly, like, without baseball, I'm not where I am now. You know, yeah, like, right. so and same with you. Yeah, same with totally. all of us. Like, totally. without baseball, will we, will we have met? No. Like, no fucking shot. 
You know, so I think that is that is it. Baseball just really glues everyone together that, that likes baseball. Mm-hmm. And if you don't like baseball, fuck you. If you're watching this, if you don't like <laughs> yeah. baseball, fuck you. you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, man, again, the, uh, that it's, of course, we use that. But also, like, we just, I mean, I got to meet you. And yeah. we had to do this shit. I guess, yeah, we're like, like here how in tight person is that? You know what I'm saying? We're, content, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. we had to talk. We got to do podcasts. We're going to do live ABs after. Yeah. Like, this stuff yeah. is tight, you yeah. know? Like, Super so uh, for me, it's a relationship that you make within the game of baseball that is huge. So. Yeah. It's funny you were saying, like, when you moved from Korea, you didn't speak any English, no. but you played baseball. And, like, you were on baseball teams and you yeah. could still, you knew how to play baseball. Because that's exactly. Like, it's not a right. language. Like, it's, you all it, know how to yeah. play baseball. Uh, because of baseball, now I can speak English fluently. Yeah, and like it brings how, people together. How awesome yeah. is that? You yeah, know what I'm saying? So cool. And it doesn't matter if you know baseball. I play with a bunch of Latinos in, in the minors. Yeah. They don't speak fucking English. Yeah. But they we love fuck, baseball, though. They just love they baseball. They ball out, and yeah. we ball out, and let's fucking ball out. Of yeah. course, it's sometimes it's tough when they don't know what second sign is and run a second <laughs> base. I'm like, fuck, you know, like, right. no like, motherfucking sign, yeah, you know? But, yeah. <laughs> but baseball, again, brings everyone together. doesn't matter where the fuck you're from. Dude, yeah. I played with dudes from Curacao, Bahamas, fucking Netherlands, like... Australians, they got dudes from every Dominican Republic, Venezuela, Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. Like I played with dudes like all over the fucking world. Yeah. And they all play baseball because they enjoy baseball. Yeah. Does that makes sense. So yeah. I think that is what baseball means to us. Like it mm-hmm. brings us together as as people. Yeah. So what's your ultimate goal with content? Like where do you see yourself in like a year, two years, three years, or where do you want to be? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't have like so I don't really have like large goals. And I've talked to Trevor about this too. Um, he's the same way. Mm-hmm. Like, of course, like we want to like do big shit. Like, I want to be the best at what I do. But I'm more like a small goals oriented. Yeah. So I said like daily goals or, or weekly time, goals right, right. or like when I said big goals like 95 or die, then I'm gonna just solely focus on that and get that done. You yeah. know. So honestly, I don't care where I'm at in a year from now. I, I don't care how many followers I got, subscribers. To me, that that's just what comes with the journey. Does that make sense? Mm. People just follow me because they like my content. And for me, I'm just going to be consistent with my content because I don't give a fuck about everybody. I care about me. Yeah. I enjoy doing it. Does that make sense? Yeah, and that's why people enjoy your content. So, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So when you have passion, people are going to like you. Yeah. And that's why, going back to your old question of being different, right? I'm going to be who I am. If you like me for who I am, great. Mm-hmm. If not, fuck you. I don't give a fuck yeah. about you. Does that yeah. make sense? Just don't worry too much about what other people think about you. Just do it. Yeah. And for me, right now, just full sending in on everything that I do, whether it's content, training that's what i'm focused on and of course i have a daughter uh, that's something the greatest thing that's ever happened to yeah. me so like i'm trying to focus on her you yeah know it's crazy all so. that stuff's happened kind of in the last like year two years like your it's life been has a- changed so you moved like you moved to, <laughs> to a different even country literally right? like it's last like, yeah. half a year even because my first year of like youtube of course i was growing but not to the extent that i'm doing that yeah so shit's going crazy on youtube fucking TikToks, all these like work situation, it's great. And then I got a kid, I got a fucking, I got a, I got a family now. Like it's just incredible. It's been an incredible half a year. 2022 has been unbelievable. Wild, yeah. Is it pretty surreal at times? You're like kind of like, how am I here? Like how did I even get here? Like yeah, it's. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you think the same way too. Yeah. Like sometimes you look back and you're like, what the fuck? Like literally a year and a half ago, I was bar managing. You know, I was running a small bar in fucking Canada no one's ever heard of you know what I'm saying like yeah. but now I'm doing this shit um, I'm grateful I'm yeah. grateful but also it comes with like what you want to do what do you want to do like you, people gotta ask that what do you fucking want to do mm-hmm. when whatever it is like you find that you want to do full sand right. you know but I think the most the biggest issue is that a lot of people don't know what they even want to do mm-hmm. they like do just work a job or, or whatever just because it pays or whatever What's your passion? Mm-hmm. I mean, you gotta find a passion, yeah. you know. And if you don't, if you don't have passion, you got a problem, you know. Like you need to find something that you. There's something. There should be something like a root, right? Like yeah. it doesn't matter who comes to you. Yeah. They cannot take away from you. Yeah. Something. Yeah. 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 Totally. That totally. makes sense. Like yeah. no one should be able to take that away from you. Yeah. If everyone around the, if everyone else in the world, literally everyone else but me, came up to me like, hey, stop playing baseball. Oh, motherfucker. Yeah. Like, I'm, no, I'm, yeah. Pulling, I'm pulling down that day. Yeah. I'll pull down against you. Like, yeah. I don't give a PR, too. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. I'll probably yeah. some salt and go yeah, full yeah, You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but you got to have that root. Yeah. Like, for me, I don't care if I'm in fucking Africa right now. Mm-hmm. All I need is a baseball. Yeah. I'm ripping it. If I don't yeah. have a baseball, I'm rock, ripping down a fucking rock. Because yeah. I truly just enjoy throwing whatever. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, so I think that's what people got to miss. You yeah. know? And, and that's something... Hopefully everyone finds it. Not everyone does, mm. um, but luckily you found it yeah. you know, of what I you're doing so, yeah. at a young age, which is huge, mm. p- to be honest, because at 19, like, I wasn't doing what you're doing, yeah. you know? And, and now, looking back, like, 
seeing you, like you guys here, it's it's been uh it's been pretty actually pretty motivational actually. I don't want to blow you guys up right now because yeah. your friends are nobody. <laughs> <laughs> but it inspires me out yeah. because you guys are so Thank young, you, but you find a passion. I can tell right away when I'm talking to you, even before this, like you can tell the passion you guys have. And passion, you can't teach that. You, I, no one like forced me to have this passion to to train for baseball with nothing to show for. Like, I'm not playing pro ball. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so, but you guys are doing it yeah. just because you enjoy the game. That's fucking perfect. Yeah. This is more of kind of a selfish question, but what's your biggest advice for someone like me or like us looking to like scale forward and just kind of like accomplish goals that we have? I, again, I think having setting uh, small goals yeah. is, is the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, so let's say you want to get from, you say you're 8,000 uh, subs on YouTube, mm-hmm. 10K. Yeah. Let's go 10K or die. Now, within that 10K or die, how are you going to get there? Yeah. You got to have a plan, right? And you need to execute your plan. And even if you, when you execute your plan, a lot of times it doesn't work that way. You're yeah. like, oh, my results are not there. You gotta adapt, then you got you right? to do more. Yeah. You got to adapt, fix, go. And I do the same thing. I've been playing baseball for how many years? Over 20 years now. And I'm training still. And to this day, I'm making changes. Like, I'm not doing the same shit over and over again. Does that make sense? Yeah. Whatever you're able to do that day is different than some other days. Yeah. So you need to adapt to the situation. Yeah. Same thing with um, everything else, whether it's content or life or whatever. You need to adapt to the situation. Yeah. So if you want to get to where you want to be, make small goals, right? And just do whatever it takes to get there. Yeah. If you, you, you say you throw 84, right? Mm-hmm. If you don't throw 87, how are you going to get there? Yeah. You can just talk about it. You need to find a way. Yeah, you need to go step, yeah every day. You every step, every yeah. fucking day, mm. whether it's throwing, lifting, hitting, you got to set goals, you got to have a plan, and you need to execute it. Even when you execute it, know that you might not even get there just because you, just because you got it done. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand. A lot of people think, oh, I'm going to put in the work, and I'm going to get the result. That's if, no, it's not even that easy. Yeah. Like, that's already complicated because a lot of people can't even do the first part. Yeah. But even so, when you do the first part, results are not guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed. The people, like... People think like, oh, I'm going to do this program for three months and I'm going to gain 10 miles an hour. Yeah. No, motherfucker. Like, no. Yeah, it's like not that That was simple. the case. Like, yeah. literally everyone yeah. will throw 100 miles an hour. Right. That's just not how it works. Yeah. You need to adapt every single day and you need to figure the fuck out yourself. Not no one else. No one's going to throw the ball for you. No one's going to do your content for you. Is anyone editing for you? No. You got to do your own shit. Yeah. Even myself right now, I'm editing all my social cuts. I make two, three posts a day. Yeah. Just on IG. Then I gotta do TikTok, Twitter, yeah. fucking YouTube. You gotta make it work. Right, it what are you back, What are you yeah, trying to yeah. do? You know, it comes like, back to that full. Like you gotta go all in. Like you have to, or you're not gonna get anywhere. Full send or die. Yeah. And I say that not lightly. And I, I know people are like, oh, it's funny. No, do the shit or fucking die. Like, like, and yeah, that's the mentality you're you not going have. all in. Yeah, Seriously, I totally you know what I'm saying. So yeah, we we're actually kind of talking about this earlier. But what's your biggest advice? Not even advice, but how do you, as a person, constantly evolve? Uh, just every in your daily life, like as a person, athlete, whatever, like what's, what do you do on a daily basis to try to get better? Again, set goals. I yeah. set goals of everything. I set goals in literally everything. Throwing, for example, I just hit 90 on the mound on Monday, okay? And before that, I was at like 86, 88, okay? I wanted to hit 90. So for that whole week, because I do VLO day once a week right now, for the whole week, I trained. Mm-hmm. I trained with recovery days and whether it's getting in better shape because I'm still kind of fat, so I'm like doing a little cardio or whatever, and we'll focus more on the speed while still lifting heavy shit. Like, that's what I do. Yeah. I show up every day to be better than who I was yesterday. Who I was, be- like, be better than who I was even when I showed up to work. Like, I let's, when I get home, like, I should be better than who I was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so I know I'm not, and not every day is like that. Mm. Some days, a lot of days actually you take L's. Gotta you know, t- yeah, yeah. you fucking know. Just gotta body it. And then kill, you yeah. literally fucking yeah. wear it. Yeah. Cause you're not a bitch. <laughs> wear the fucking L yeah. and move the fuck on. Yeah. Learn from it. Mm. Move the fuck on. How many L's do you think I've taken? I've, <sighs> motherfucker, I've taken L's all my life. Yeah. I play pro ball. I've got released a couple times. I mean, I've been taking L's yeah. all my fucking life. I'm still here mm-hmm. and I'm doing Better than myself. Ever too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the best I've ever been in because of all the fucking L's I've taken. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, what, yeah. Not even just training, life. Yeah. You know, you go through a bunch of shit. I'm still taking L's. I'll probably go home and take an L tonight. You know, <laughs> right? Change yeah. some diaper, eating shit, whatever the fuck it is, I'll yeah. probably do that. Yeah, but, but you're prepared for it. You're but ready it, for that's it. what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you yeah. learn from it yeah. and you don't make the same mistake next time and you yeah. get better. Yeah. Does that make sense? So yeah. that's what it is, man. The biggest advice, I don't know if I can give you an advice really because I don't know if I'm in the position, but. Just set small goals yep. and fucking crush it. Yep. And when I mean crush it, nothing else. If you have, you have this one goal, let's say you want to throw from 84 to 86, literally nothing else in life should bother you other than that. Mm. Like when I was doing 95 or die journey, 
I would go to work for eight, to eight hours or whatever, come home. All I could think about, even at work, was throwing 95. I was sleeping. I was dreaming that I hit 95. Yeah, Not yeah, even yeah. joking you. Yeah. Like 95. It's like I was dreaming that. And I was that invested in that. Yeah. And whenever you do anything, you got to be that invested in it. But even so, you're not going to get it. But you have a better chance of getting it. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. I got one more. I remember I listened to one of your podcasts from a while ago. You were on with someone. It was like the Juco podcast. Yep. Um, so you told a story about, like, they asked what's your best Juco story. Right, right. And it was like the cops and robbers. <laughs> yeah, one. yeah. You want to tell that story real quick? Yeah. So, yeah. I thought that was so funny. Man, I got some fucking... F- yeah, I got if you stories, got any other stories, I got too, stories out the ass yeah. out of Juco. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, I mean, fuck, I did a lot of stupid shit in Juco. Again, when you're in Juco, out of nowhere in fucking Kansas, 5,000 people, you make shit to yeah. have fun. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah. Of course, we balled the fuck out, but you still got to have fun with your boys, you know? So, one time we played Cops and Robbers, okay? You got, I don't know if anyone's familiar with that. Course, yeah. So, half a team gets separated. One team is Cops, one team's Robbers. Cops are trying to catch you. Robbers start from uh, one of our boys' house, and then we got to touch home plate. It's about, I don't know, like five miles or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. So, we started, like, I'm talking midnight, like super fucking late. We're all drunk anyways. So we're like, it's fucking co-, you know? <laughs> Coach, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got fucked up. We're doing cops and robbers. Yeah. Um, so, I was one of the robbers. Mm. And we're going. We start from the house. And then uh, cops start at, the, at, the, at our school. Sure. And yeah. then they're trying to catch us. Okay. And then our goal as a robber is to touch home plate. Mm-hmm. And we win. So we're going. We all separate, of course. I mean, there are fucking dudes everywhere. And, they, and then we all dressed up as robbers as well. No way. Robbers <laughs> yeah. dress up robbers. Yeah. Cops dress as cops. Right? So, we're doing it. And I'm by myself at this point, and it's pretty late in the game. And then uh, I'm getting close to the school, uh-huh. right? So I'm like, all right, dude, I got this shit in the bank. Let's fucking go. No one's around me. Dead quiet at like 1, 2 in the morning in fucking Kobe, Kansas. <laughs> like, it's dead. <laughs> you know, it's pitch dark. I'm running. And I'm like, dude, I'm I got this shit. Yeah, I'm fucking yeah. hauling ass yeah. now, too, to touch on play. Mm. And then uh, I hear, hey, stop. And I'm like, and I'm, I'm like, Motherfucking! I'm like, fuck you, bitch! <laughs> I'm like, start running. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. and then, and then yeah. I'm, I'm running because it's pitch dark. I'm like, fuck you, motherfucker! Yeah. I'm running. He's like, stop! I'm like, I'm running. Oh my god! I turn the corner, and by the school, like when you get closer to school, there's lights. Yeah. I turn around. It's an actual cop. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> That's so funny. I was dude. fucking like freaking out, dog. Like I thought, like. Oh my, like I've never been, yeah. I've never even dealt with a like, cop before. Like, like 1920? I was 1920, yeah, exactly. Like your crazy. age, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so we, like, I'm like, what the, f-? like, I'm freaking out. I'm, yeah. like, I'm like this. He like pins me on the wall. Dude. Like, cuffs me. I've never been cuffed in my fucking life, you know? I'm like, I'm freaking out. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Apparently, there was an actual theft that happened um, that night <laughs> yeah. um, earlier of the day, and they're trying to catch this robber. And then that's, that's, one of that's literally the worst timing. Literally the possible. worst timing. Yeah. And of course, Juke, I mean, small town Juke, yeah. of course it happens to yeah. me, you know? Like, so I'm fucking like almost crying, dog. Like, I thought I was going to get, he's like, yeah. what the fuck are you doing? Like, pin me against the wall. And then, you know, the school walls are not like, yeah. It, yeah. it's like, it's like, you know, those like little cement, like, but it's like, yeah. it's all fucking, yeah. I'm like stuck there. Dude. I'm just like face crushed. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like about to cry. You yeah. know, I'm like, oh, we're just playing this game. I'm trying to explain. He's, he's not like, yeah, sure. It. He's <laughs> like, yeah. fuck you, bitch. Yeah. I caught you, yeah. you know? Yeah. So we go back and I'm, and I'm like freaking out. And apparently he called the coach mm-hmm. and I'm like, yes, co- coach, like you can come. So <clears throat> they let me go home. Okay. I go home. I'm like, I can't even sleep. Yeah. So next morning I did not sleep the whole day, mm. the whole night. I'm freaking out my fucking, like I'm freaking out. And at the time, I was living in a closet for 50 bucks a month, oh you know? So I'm yeah, stuck yeah. in this closet. I'm just like, you're like freaking the fuck out. It's That's a small, crazy. tiny room. I saw a picture on my Facebook. It's sad. And then um, I show up to um, our, our coach's office next morning. And then coaches fuck with me. Dude. My, co- my head coach is like, hey, I'm sorry. We have to take your scholarship away. We need to send you back to Canada. I started crying. That's <laughs> like, so Because that was like everything dude. for me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm like, like I literally like just lost everything. It's so cruel, dude. For doing the <laughs> yeah. stupidest shit ever in yeah. my life. You yeah. know, I'm just like, and I didn't do anything wrong. I was just like yeah. playing the game. Yeah. I'm like crying. And then the assistant coach starts busting out laughing. <laughs> dude. And dude, that was like the one of the worst and the best days of my life. Right. The relief. I'm like. Dude, and I'm like, swing of emotions. Like, oh just my like, yeah. God, dude. Uh, that was probably the worst day of my life. For me, it was the best story. Because yeah. I went from like just roller coaster of the day and just like cool. he's like hey I'm fucking yeah. with you apparently uh cop knew who like cop knows coach yeah, coach okay. been there forever yeah um he's still there right now as we speak um but yeah man it was crazy and yeah dude i got i got stories out the ass i mean fucking one day 
Kansas gets super windy. Okay, um, and we got all fucked up again. Of course, that's all we do in JUCO. And then uh, we go <coughs> to like a like a like construction site. Yeah. The construction going on, and there's like a, they had this like not a clip, but like they had like these like sand like whatever like huge like sure. like yeah, whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we we're fucking idiots. We're drunk as fuck. So we grab like tarps from the field, and then we cut it. We tie them on our wrist and the ankle, and we try to be like flying squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> we try to, we try to yeah, fly. We thought it was going to work. We yeah. thought it was going to work. That's we're <laughs> idiots, obviously. So we're in funny. Chico. I mean, yeah. we don't give a fuck. We just needed something to do, yeah. right? So we go like. Dude, that's fucking hilarious. We yeah. go and yeah. jump. My fat ass just like a shit of like just stupid. And Wind's yeah. howling like, like 30, 40 yeah. miles an hour. It was crazy. That's crazy. So and actually one of our boys, the second baseman, a tiny kid, he like jumped and like, he like flew a little no bit. No way. We were like, we went crazy. Yeah. <laughs> let's fucking go. Dude, that's so That's like funny. the greatest like thing that's ever happened. That's like content, you yeah, know? But, like, I wish I was yeah, in content, you know? know? But it's like that's crazy shit, man, like that. It's just do dumb shit and you live, you laugh. And then for me, to this day, I'm 33. I mean, that was what, fucking 12, 13 years ago. Still the greatest time of my life. The two years I spent in GCO really grew me as a, not even a baseball player, more like human being yeah. to... I mean, look at my brand now. The, what I'm doing now is all built on what I was doing in JUCO. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's why I'm a huge JUCO yeah. advocate. Yeah. And hopefully I can change the mindset of these kids on, on what JUCO actually is. It's not a, it's not a, oh, fuck, I need to go to JUCO. It's a stepping stone. It's a stepping stone to really yeah. fucking jump off. I didn't get any offer from any school until May of my senior year. Wow. And the only school I talked to was Kobe Community College that came out to see me. And then the funny story, um, they're... Apparently, they had already had a catcher, already signed, ready to go. Dropped out last minute. Wow. He wanted to go, he ended, he wanted to go some D1 or some shit. Oh. And it dropped off. That's funny. Like, it's kind of full circle. He, uh, and then my yeah. assistant coach is a Canadian, and he, his brother saw me playing up all the way up in Canada. So he fucking, this motherfucker's DGF as well. He drove 30 fucking hours just to come watch me play. Wow. And then he watched me. Offer right away. I signed that day. This is May of my senior year. A lot of kids these days... That's what crazy. they they commit when they're like sophomores yeah. and shit, Younger. like, like freshmen. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. But like I didn't sign until my senior year, of May. Like I'm about to done with my season. I signed, went there, balled out, ended up going, you know, D1, and I ended up getting drafted. The motherfucker they were they wanted at first, done playing baseball by that time. Crazy. You know, like so fuck yeah. everybody. Yeah. So I was luckily got picked, and I balled the fuck out, moved on to the better, um, like I moved on to D1, balled out, got oh. drafted. Ball, you know, like so. Got to bet on yourself. It's That's not really, where you yeah. start. Yeah. A lot of kids think about, oh, you know, I need to go to D1 or whatever. It's not where you start. It's where you fucking finish. Mm-hmm. Like, who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck about your buddies that's going to D1? Yeah. You're going to play more than them anyways. You're going to play baseball for longer than them. All right? So just put that in your head. What, like I said, stop giving a fuck. And I'm not saying motherfuck everybody. Yeah. I mean, you can if you want to. <laughs> I do it, you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But, like. Just stop giving a fuck. Yeah. Dude, worry about yourself. Fuck everybody, and just go as far as you can get yourself. Mm-hmm. That's. I think that's an awesome place to end. That was awesome. Yeah. Thank yeah, you so much. It. No, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. Really appreciate that. Yes, sir. Yeah, that was awesome. Was that okay? That was awesome. Okay, thank cool. You so much. I got fired up. Oh, shit, sweat, man, sweat my ass. I'm yeah. late to that. Hit a pen, I pull up heavy in the lab on a eddy. I got three rows, run the valley. In New Dior, not for belly. Stay that money, I for Perry. I shoot droppers, call me Larry. They need a Yonkers, I need a Navy. Don't need a sponsor, hurry to heaven. They calling me the main head to slow down, I done bought too many chains.